very good morning to each one of you. Uh, thank you very much, Srinivas. It's uh, my honor and uh, truly a privilege to be chairing this session. It promises to be an extremely important session because uh, it's going to be a learning for each one of us here in the audience. And I suspect it's going to be a learning for those on the dais as well because this is a new statute and there are so many new perspectives which, have, uh, which are to be discussed, which are to be debated. Uh, I'm going to uh, depart. Usually I begin by saying that we're all going to sort of, you know, everyone on the stage is so well known that I don't, doesn't require an introduction. But today I'm going, I'm, I propose to read in some detail the CVs of uh, the very distinguished people we have over here. And the reason that I wish to read this, uh, their CVs at length is because of their extraordinarily rich experience in the field. And I cannot imagine, uh, and I truly uh, commend the organizers for bringing together this particular panel because it's a rich and varied experience in uh, the subject of criminal procedure and all its various dimensions. The practice, uh, the, uh, uh, what we have over here on offer is persons who have an experience as practitioners and as lawyers across a range of uh, uh, roles at the bar. We have experience from the bench. We have experience from the academic perspective. And this really are the three primary braids which will make for an effective uh, administration of any criminal statute. Uh, I don't have very much in terms of the opening remarks, but since these, uh, well, actually, I now notice that there is a, uh, there is a mobile sort of whatever microphone uh, near close to my desk, but I thought that there was just going to be this. So I thought I'll just sweep through the, uh, 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 the uh, CVs of the various uh, individual speakers, the eminent speakers. And I thought I'd also do that because probably the uh, audience, you know, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning is uh, quite a task. So it will uh, take a little time for uh, the hall to fill up. So our first speaker is uh, Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, who is additional solicitor general uh, of, uh, of India in the Supreme Court. He graduated from the National Law School in 1997. And you will notice when I come to Mr. Acharya's uh, biodata that he was long before that a designated senior. And so we have a very, very rich variety here. Uh, the Mr. Uh, Banerjee owes me a book. Uh, he is the co-editor of a 2008 uh, book titled The Truth About Tista Settlement. And I am very, very anxious to read that because I have read her uh, volume on Foot Soldier of the Constitution, uh, which I commend to each one of you. But I suspect that Mr. Banerjee's edited volume has a different perspective and he should uh, immediately sort of share the link so that we can all order it on Amazon or whatever if, he does, if he's reluctant to present each one with a copy. Uh, he was appointed as Advocate General of Nagaland in 2015, designated as a Senior Advocate by the Gauhati High Court in 2016. Uh, of course, as we know, designated by the Supreme Court of India. Now, this next part, uh, apart from his great competence as a law officer, I can attest to. Uh, and the next part is that he regularly gives deli uh, delivers lectures at international conferences, at conferences uh, organized by universities and institutions. And each one of them has uh, a rich array of perspectives. And I can assure you that he puts in a huge amount of work even before uh, sharing those perspectives uh, with the audience. And, uh, we, and uh, his interests, of course, extend much beyond the law to aspects of culture, religion. And uh, uh, he has written and authored several articles uh, in this regard. The uh, second uh, uh, speaker, as we go through the panel, is uh, the redoubtable and formidable Mr. B.V. Acharya, who is sort of a living legend of the law. He's been so recognized uh, by the Bar Association of India. He's, of course, a member of our family. And he was born in uh, Udupi district. And, uh, well, when I was looking at this statute, 
I was uh, wondering how do I connect this to Udupi. And I then uh, saw that uh, the statute which we are discussing is the Bharatya Nagrik Suraksha Sanhita, which sort of abbreviates into BNSS. And frankly, I thought of BNHS. I don't know how many of you are familiar with BNHS. I can see Mr. Varunjikar is certainly familiar with BNHS and several others. So it first struck me that now BNHS is what I am going to sort of uh, talk about. And the BNHS is the Bombay Natural History Society. It has a connection to the law. It's ab ab absolutely a premier uh, society uh, which engages in all aspects of natural history. It was set up in 1883. And its connection to the law is that one of its founders was uh, John Duncan Inverarity. I don't know whether any of you have heard of Inverarity, apart from the Bombay lawyers over here. But he was a le legendary barrister. And the Chief Justice of the then Chief Justice of the ba Bombay High Court, so we are talking about 1883 and thereabouts, said that he dominated the profession uh, in the Bombay High Court for three decades. And in the Bombay High Court on the ground floor, there's a plaque because at that time, the council's chambers were part of the high court building on the ground floor. And there's a plaque recognizing this formidable person. And in Vacha's book, there's a whole lot about uh, JD in virality. So we thank, so that's the connection of BNHS and uh, the law. And of course, uh, the, the, I, I keep on my desk uh, a volume of the uh, Migratory Atlas, which is a brilliant book which has come out of, uh, 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 published by BNHS, which shows the migratory patterns of all these birds, you know, across India. And my favorite is the South Polar Schooner. Now, why do I raise the South Polar Schooner? The South Polar Schooner was ringed. It was given a ring by the U.S. Antarctic Research Program. And it traveled 17,500 kilometers, that's the direct route, to land in Udupi. And uh, it was unringed over there. So you can just imagine the stamina of this incredible bird and the journey which it made over 17,500 kilometers. Now we're not very sure as to whether that is a pattern which, these, uh, which the schooner follows regularly. But we have to sort of link up as to, you know, whether birds... I mean, are, are we going to be free birds? Are the birds going to escape? Are the birds going to be entrapped by the new criminal procedure code or rather by the BNSS? Or are they going to sort of, uh, you know, remain a, as it were uh, in, in terms of uh, their uh, migration from one jurisdiction to the other? But returning to Mr. Acharya, he was chairman of the Karnataka State Bar Council between 79 and 82 designated as a senior advocate by the Karnataka High Court in 1989. In December 89, he was appointed Advocate General, a post he held five times between 1989 and 2012. In 2005, he was appointed as the Special Public Prosecutor in the Disproportionate Assets case against Selvi Jailalitha, former Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. And uh, then there's a whole line of uh, honorary doctorates and other distinctions. And in November 2014, he published his autobiography, All From Memory, which was released, and a second volume, Memoir of a Prosecutor. So I'm very much looking forward, as I'm sure each one of you is as well, to his presentation because it's so rich. And uh, at the sprightly age of 88, Mr. Acharya is here. We welcome him. We thank him immensely for his presence with a round of applause and I thank you each one, uh, each one of you. For many of us, uh, sort of, he's been uh, a senior advocate for longer than he was an advocate and uh, longer for uh, than uh, many of our uh, careers. We then have uh, the redoubtable, now I don't know how to say this, uh, should we call it, say, Justice Mukta Gupta or should we just say Mukta Gupta senior advocate? Because, you know, justice is something which remains with you for life. It's, an, it's a great distinction which society and indeed the constitution uh, confers on you. And we're very grateful to, to her for uh, sharing with us uh, 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 her time. She uh, uh, graduated from uh, securing her LLB from the Campus Law Center in 1983, was enrolled by the Delhi Bar Council as an advocate in 1984, and practiced in a range of civil as well as criminal cases. Now, this next part is very important. 
She was appointed as the Standing Counsel Criminal of the Government of NCT of Delhi in the Delhi High Court in August 2001, has conducted many criminal cases, including the Parliament and Red Fort shootout cases, the Jessica Lal murder case, the Naina Sahini murder case, the Nitish Katara murder case in the High Court and in the Supreme Court, and had been a counsel for the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So you cannot get a better speaker or a speaker with a richer and a more varied experience. She was special counsel for the CBI in cases like the Naval War Room leak case and the Priyadi, uh, Darshini Matu murder case, the Madhumita Sharma murder case, and was also a member of the, uh, of the Delhi uh, Legal Services Authority. She was elevated as a judge of the Delhi High Court in 2009, and she's back in our ranks now as a senior advocate practicing regularly before the Supreme Court of India. And I think we're, I'm, I'm really looking forward because uh, just before this session began, we had an exchange and she said she's been deeply studying the BNSS uh, uh, and uh, its various uh, parameters. Our final uh, speaker is going to be Dr. Kumar uh, Askan Pandey, who is an associate professor at RML uh, University. He's written extremely widely on the subject and uh, updated and written several textbooks. His uh, rich experience covers, uh, amongst other things, uh, having authored and revised five textbooks on criminal law, the law of evidence, juvenile justice, published by leading Indian publishers like EBC and CLP. And uh, his latest publications include Apprehension and Bail of CICL Procedure and Practice, Child Victim Vis-a-Vis -vis Children Offender Exploring Linkages Between the Age of Consent and Minimum Age of Criminal Responsibility. So you can see that this is uh, truly a very rich and varied and experienced panel. Finally, um, uh, Srinivas, who introduced me, is a young advocate. Amongst, I count him amongst our ranks in the Bar Association of India. Now, without further ado, I call on our first speaker, Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee, to address you either from, I mean, from the podium preferably, but we can do it from the desk as well. And I request you to sort of uh, greet and welcome him in the traditional manner.